All right, so uh, we're back uh, discussing chapter 11, which is uh, titled Survival Analysis and Sensor Data. And in this session, we're going to discuss this exercise, uh, apply exercise number 10, which uses the brain tumor or the brain cancer data set that comes in the ISLP uh, library and also uh, I believe it's, it's an R uh, data set too. And we're going to be discussing some of the exercises that the book uh, is stating. So the first one is plot a Kaplan-Meier survival curve with uh, plus or minus one standard error bands using the Kaplan-Meier feeder uh, function estimator from the lifelines package. All right, so let's let's do that. Let me get my my code here. All right, so the first thing that we we do as we do in 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 R is to import some of the libraries that we're going to be using. So usually you import the pandas library for data wrangling, the numpy for uh, numerical calculations, the matplotlib which is the standard package in Python for uh, data visualization. And then from the ISLP, we're going to import two, uh, uh, two functions. The first one is load the data. We can, we're going to use this to load that uh, brain uh, tumor uh, data. And then there's another one that we use in the lab, which is uh, called model spec MS. And we're going to use it at the, in the last exercise. Uh, also, we're going to, uh, uh, you know, filter uh, the warnings so they they don't keep they 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 don't keep uh, uh, appearing. Uh, some other warnings about uh, you know deprecation and uh, status of, of Python. Okay, so we already did that. Let me see. Oh yeah, we already did that. And then we're going to load the the brain tumor brain cancer data set. Well, let's do that and. Uh, we can see that there are eight columns in that data set. Uh, sex is one of them, diagnosis of the tumor, uh, the location, uh, something called the Karnofsky uh, index, GTV, stereo, and then the two ones that we are always concerned that drives, you know, this survival analysis uh, 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 functions are the status and time. Of the of the of the of the observation from zero, so the status the status is uh, zero corresponds to uh, sensor data. In other words, dur during the period of the study, those patients that have zero didn't arrive to the event, and the event that in this case is death. Then the ones the the ones that has status equal one are the ones that arrive during that time period. So we have patients that died during the, the analysis and patients that survived, all right? So if we count that as status uh, uh, column, we're going to get this, okay? So we have in zero status, we have 53 observations. Uh, those are the ones that are censored that mm, they survive or they withdraw from the study uh any 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 other reason except that they didn't arrive to the to the event to, to death and then the ones which are the patients that, that that die okay so to create a couple of major uh, uh survival survival curve we're going to import from that package that the the the, the textbook is mentioning lifelines uh, we're going to import that Kaplan Mayer fitter. And that's the main, uh, you know, the main uh, uh, class that we're going to use to uh, derive the, the information that we need to uh, plot a, a survival, a K KM survival curve. So let's uh, import that. And then we're going to instantiate that Kaplan Mayer fitter and we're going to call it just KMF. And that's what we're doing here. Just like when we're doing any, 
you know, uh, machine learning algorithms uh, using the scikit-learn uh, framework, um, we instantiate, you know, that uh, algorithm that we're going to use. It's the same. It's the same process here. Then we're going to fit this, uh, you know, uh, object. We're going to fit it, and as you can see, we're going to fit it with the durations, which is the time, right? The time column, which is the data set, and then in brackets we call, you know, the column. In this case, time, and the event observed, which is the status. It, it you know, uh, refers to the status. Uh, we're going to use that as the event observed. In other words, if it was uh, the event was observed or it was censored, and because the book, the exercise is telling us that we want a survival curl with plus or minus one standard error. Uh, usually, if we leave this without the alpha argument, we're going to get. Uh, a curve with two plus plus or minus two standard errors. In other words, a 95% confidence intervals. We're going to then use alpha within the fitting function to then reduce that confidence interval instead of plus or minus two to plus or minus one. And we're going to use this alpha, which is 33. So the complement of that will be 0 0.7, 0 0.67. And 0.67 is the area under the curve uh, in a normal curve within minus one standard deviation and plus one standard deviation. Okay. So we do this. Use the fitting. We got the object. And then we plot that uh, survival curve from the the fitting of the, you know, of, of, uh, of, that, of that object, which is going to be then uh, included in this in plot survival function. It's going to plot already uh those uh survival probabilities so if we will run this okay all at once we're going to get our curve all right and we can see that if we change this alpha let's say we change this alpha to 0 0.05 which give you nine percent you see that the bands are going to be wider okay because we have a more we're including more uh you know uh variance into that main line, which is the, the solid, the solid uh, line that we do. Um, any comments, questions? Not at the moment. Okay, we're good. All right, so I'm going to skip for now this one, uh, which is the, you know, we have to uh, draw a bruise trap. I'm going to leave it for the, for the last. Uh, because it needs a little bit more, uh, <laughs> a little bit more uh, 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 discussion, but 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 it, but it's there at least you know the 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 first try that I that I did trying to get from the R uh, script trying to get into a into a Python script, but let's uh, let's skip to the number C, and number C is fit a Cox proportional hazard model that uses all of the predictors to predict survival. And we already have seen this, okay? In the lab that we discussed uh, last uh, uh, last Sunday, uh, we did that uh, precisely, okay? So for uh, doing the Cox uh, proportional hazards uh, regression, which is a regression model, we're going to import from lifelines, the same package, we're going to uh, import Cox, Cox pH feeder, okay? Which is the function that we're going to use to uh, uh, compute uh, that regression. So we're going to do this, right? Okay, we're going to do some cleaning first. And uh, as you can see, we're going to use that MS uh, uh, utility function from the ISLP uh, to clean the columns and do the, the one hot encoding. So we're going to do the cleaning, dropping uh, any NAs. There's just one, besides that, there's, there's one, uh, a missing body, one of the rows. So we're going to, you know, uh, delete that one. Then we're going to use the MS function that we uh, call already, uh, uh, you know, uh, up, up there, right here. Okay, the MS uh, function. And then we're going to fit. Uh, you're going to use the fit transform to do the cleaning and get that clean uh, data set. 
And that's this is how it looks like. All the F, right? It's going to look like this. So as you can see, for example, in 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 the in the gender uh, sex uh, column, we only see the male, right? So that means that the female is the is the base. Like in you know, like, like you see in R when you do a regression, uh, if you have factor levels, one is going to be the base, and then the other ones are going to be uh, one hot encoded. So in this case, uh, that means that zero means that the the person the, the person the patient is a male and one that is that that is a excuse me zero that is female and one that is male and the same thing for the diagnosis which is also a categorical uh, column okay and the base here is going to be hg glioma and we're going to talk that in terms of what what it means that the base is that one uh we're going to instantiate the the Cox PX uh, function, right? And then we're going to fit. I want to, we're going to fit in this way. I want to fit all of the of the data frame, all of the you know uh, uh, columns or, or or predictors. Then time is going to be uh, the duration of the observation, and then status is going to be if it is sensor or not sensor. So that function already covers. You know all these arguments that you have to you have to define. So when we do this, right, and we do a print summary, let's let's do a print summary. Okay, uh, we get all this you know uh, information. The number of observations was eighty seven, and these are like uh, you know it it resembles uh, similar to a table that we are used that we're using R with uh, when you use a regression and you uh, apply summary to that uh, regression object. Um, one of the things that you can also see here is the concordance. The concordance in the COX-PH uh, uh, regressor, a re regression model, is analog to what is called the R-square. So in other words, how much of this model explains the variance, the variance of the of of the of the time and and and, and survival, the, you know, the survival probability, and here we have an index of 0.79, which is just pretty good. It works the same way the R squared. In other words, the more the closer to one, the closer to one, a positive one, that means that the model is explaining all the variance, or or at least most of the variance. Of the of the of the response, in this case is 0.79, which is you know pretty pretty good. All right, then we're going to uh, subset this summary because it has all this information, which is all right. But we want to check you know a couple of things here. So if we do fit all summary and we just uh, select uh, the coefficient column, the the, the the standard deviation, the standard error of the coefficient column and the p-value, which is over here, uh, we get this. Okay, so we get a kind of a subset, a small uh, uh, summary table. And one of the things that we want to check if if the if the if these regressors, the covariate or these regressors are significant statistically or not. So one of the things that we can notice is that uh, taking as a threshold, that the p-value is going to be less than 0 0.05 to be statistically significant. We see that the Karnofsky index, the chi uh, regressor, is 0 0.002 uh, as, as a p-value. So that means that that, um, that, that covariate, uh, the probability of being zero is almost you know, uh, negligible, okay? So that means that it's statistically quite fish, uh, uh, significant. And also, we see that all this, all this uh, diagnosis, you know, uh, uh, factors are also significant. But it's significant because the base is significant. Okay, if you run this, for example, in the R script, you will see that the H H uh, H G glioma, which is the basis, that's the one that is significant, and the other ones are reacting in you know, response to that base. And what is happening is that, uh, you know, the risk 
associated with that particular uh, uh, diagnosis, HG glioma, which is the one that we're not, are not seeing because it's the base, uh, compared to, for example, meningloma, is around more than eight times, okay? The, the risk associated with, you know, arriving to the event, which is, which is death. And, it's, and the eight times is computed by uh, doing an absolute value of this coefficient and then applying the exponential uh, uh, function, the, you know, the, 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 the E uh, function, which is the exponential function, because this is more, it's a log, okay? So to get the, the original estimate, we need to uh, apply the exponential factor, and that's what the, that eight, uh, uh, that odds ratio of eight comes off. This is similar to what we were doing uh, with the logistic regression, you know, interpreting those uh, coefficients that you have to apply the exponent and then you get the odds ratio and you get a sense of how likely or how unlikely is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, event occurring uh, considering that particular uh, uh, a predictor, all right? And of course, the KEI, which is by itself, is a numeric uh, uh, fact, uh, a numeric uh, a feature, uh, that one is also uh, highly significant. The other ones are not. So the other ones could be, there's a probability that, that they could be zero. Okay. Any questions, comments? Not at the moment. Okay. So uh, let's tackle the 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 the, the last ex exercise, the last uh, exercise, and then we go back to the bootstrap with the bootstrap you know, gave me a little bit of a headache. <laughs> okay, so let's do the D. Uh, we're going to stratify the data by the value of the that chi, Kanovsky uh, index. In other words, we're going to convert it from a numeric to a, to a categorical. And in parentheses, it says that since one only one observation has chi 40, and that's going to be problematic because there's only one observation and then, you know, it needs more than one, you know, for this to be, uh, you know, to, to work, okay? To not give us give us an error. Uh, what it says is that you can group that, that observation together with the observations that have chi equals 60. So in other words, that observation that has chi 40, we are going to replace the 40 with 60. That's what it, you know, it, 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 it translates. Then it says plot Kaplan survivor curves for each of the five strata adjusted for the other uh, predicted. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to start with a clean uh, data set, right? This one, the clean data set without any, uh, uh, no values. And we're going to check how- Actually, I do have a question. Uh -huh. What is, yes. I guess, what's the range of the chi? Is it only in like um, factors of 10? Uh, the chi, okay. Uh, let's let's do this, and I'll 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 tell you. <laughs> okay, no worries. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so if we do a value counts, which is similar to the count function in you know in dplyr in rd rd plier, you know that that that, that you choose the count and and you can sort it, etc. The value counts is the analog of that function in R, and it gives us more or less you know the distribution of that particular uh, uh, feature. So in this case, the, the values ranges from 40 to 100. But as you can see, there's a, a mix of values, you know, between the, the 40 and the 100. So we have 60, we have 70, we have 80, 90, and 100. I think that uh, uh, that, that answers your question, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. Very good. Yeah, we, I was getting there, I was getting there. <laughs> All right. And this is the distribution, okay? So for example, uh, 80 has the more counts in terms of the total, you know, uh, the total the total uh, sample, which is, uh, in this case, it's 87 now, because before it was 88, but we uh, dropped that uh, that uh, no, no value from that row. So it's 36, then we go to 90, to 70, and all that. So what we have to do is first get rid of this 40, right? Because it told us, okay, there's only one observation and that is going to give you progress. So we're going to convert that 40 to 60, all right? So how do we do that? 
Well, the first thing that I did was copy uh, the, the clean, you know, the clean uh, data set, and I named it clean underscore uh, K K I, right? Okay, just doing a copy here. And then we're going to use a NumPy uh, function called where. And what where does is something similar to what we know in R if else, all right? So for example, if that chi in that clean chi data set, that chi is, is equal to 40, we're going to change it to 60. If not, then it's going to stay with the same value. So the only thing that we're going to do here with that, you know, MP that where is like an if else, and it's going to change that value of 40 of that row to 60. All right. And we're going to, you know, we're going to validate that uh, doing the end account. So if we do the count, the 40 shouldn't be, sh shouldn't be there. Okay. Uh, we have to do, okay, because it's another data set, right? It's clean chi underscore chi, right? Okay, so if we do that, then we see that there's no 40 anymore. Okay, so that's the first thing that we have to get rid of. Then we're going to do another uh, data manipulation and we're going to convert that chi instead of a numeric feature to a categorical feature. All right, so we're going to do this like this as type and parentheses and uh, category in dash. In quotes, sorry. Okay, and now if we do this, clean chi, right? And we apply info. You see that chi, instead of being a numeric or a float or an integer, is going to be a categorical. So it's going to be treated as a label. All right. Then we need to create. Uh, I'm I'm following the the script that that was in the lab, okay? Because in the lab, they did something similar, but for the diagnosis. So I'm following that, you know, script, that recipe for the chi. So the first thing that they're going to do is create what is called a model uh, a data. Uh, so we're going to extract first the levels, okay? With this uh, function called unique, right? And we got the levels. Of which is are the labels, the unique labels of uh of, of chi now, which is you know each of those you know uh numbers, all right, treat it as a label. And then what we're going to do is uh compute with this function, compute what is called a series mean, all right, for the the the, the attributes of each of the columns. So we're going to do this, right? Okay, we're going to uh, you know instantiate that, uh, that 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 function, and then we're going to apply. It. And what we're going to do is with this function apply, we're going to apply that function to each one of those uh, columns in this uh, in in this uh, uh, in this data set. All right, you know, and that's is zero means that it's going to be done by the you know by 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 by, by the columns. All right. So we got a model that data and it looks like this so far. Okay, it looks like that, but it's going to be, you know, it's going to change a little, a little more. So now we're going to create a data frame using PD data frame. And we're going to use model uh, data dot log, which is zero, which is the 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 chi for the ranges of each of those levels. So to run this, okay, we're going to run it. And then now it looks a little bit different. Okay, so now we have a data set and we have uh, more or less, you know, our you know typical data set, but now it's kind of transformed, right? The status is uh, changed, you know, to kind of a, uh, zero to one range and also uh, time. So it's kind of normalized there. So when we do this, model df chi equal to the levels, then we get the whole data set. Okay. And we got, and these transformations are basically the means, the means of what we apply here in, the, in this function. Okay. 
So now what we're going to do is construct that model matrix. Remember, I I'm following that, that recipe, okay? So it's not, you know, that I, you know, uh, did, did it on my own. I just was copying that that particular recipe and tried to understand you know, what was what was going on. So we're going to transform with OLMS. Okay. OLMS is right here. Okay. This function here, OLMS, which is a helper tool from the from the ISLP app library, I'm going to apply it to that uh, model DF, which is going to hot encode this uh, categorical variables. That's what I expect, right? Uh, we're going to then index by the levels, which is the levels of the chi, and then we get the model X, okay? And we get something similar, something similar to what we had in the previous, uh, you know, exercise, uh, where we had to do a transformation to get those uh, categorical variables as one encoded. But uh, as you can see, the one that it was not unencoded is chi, because we need it as, as it is, you know, to try to parse all these curves that we're going to be uh, doing. So now we're going to apply the predict function, which is from the fit all. Fit all is here. Okay, the Cox, right? Uh, we're going to apply the Cox uh, prediction uh, uh, model to do the prediction. And this is the function to predict, predict survival function. And it's going to accept that model X. Okay, so that the whole thing to do this, you know, transformation is to get the data set in a shape that predict survival function can accept it, all right? So now we have our uh, predictions, right, for each of the of the kind, which is the probabilities, uh, survival probabilities, and then we plot, all right? And this is the result. So what are we seeing here? Okay, yeah, uh, uh, Lydia, can you can you can you tell me more or less what are you seeing there in that graph? So I'm guessing it's saying like the higher the chi. Mm -hmm. Wait, I forget which one is okay. The higher the chi, yeah, the more that, likely the, the, they'll one, reach right? the event. Yeah, that's that, that red, which is it corresponds to yeah. one hundred. Uh -huh. Yeah, what? yeah. So they're more likely to reach the event. It seems like. Well, uh, they they're surviving. The event. Oh, the that's survive. Oh, okay. yeah, so in, in other words, that, they're not reaching that event. Oh. Okay. Ah, Remember, these are survivor yeah. probabilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah. Don't, don't get confused with this hazard. The hazard is in terms of what is the risk of ha achieving that event. In the survival curve, which is the K KM uh, curve, survival curve, what we're seeing is as time progresses, right, which is the x axis. What is the probability of that particular observation to not arrive to that event? Okay, to survive that event. So it's clear, right, that chi, if it's the highest value, let's say 100, has the highest probability curve of all the other, you know, uh, categories. And the one with the lowest, okay, uh, which is expected is 60 which is in the lower band, and you see this curve, which is more, uh, you know, the, the slope is kind of uh, very, very sharp, right? You know, compared to this one, which is not that, that uh, you know, not, not, not that uh, acute, okay? So that, that's how we, we interpret, you know, the, these curves. So the, the higher it is, the higher the probability of surviving the event, in other words, of not reaching that event, whichever it is. It could be death in this case. It could be churn. It could be, you know, what, what, how, how, however you define the status, okay, and what, what you, and what you're studying. Okay, so I, I think this, this one really, you know, hung on the, on the, you know, on, on the foundations of what is survival analysis. Okay. All right. So uh, we have one thirty. Okay, I, I kind of promised that it's going to be thirty minutes. So. <laughs> Let's go with the bootstrap. And the bootstrap, uh, I, I'm still struggling with this one. Okay, I got to be honest, because I didn't find any, you know, correlated to this particular uh, exercise. Apparently, everyone was kind of skipping it, <laughs> and uh, I took some, you know, reference from from an R R script that the book uh, shows on how to do this. 
okay? But this is uh, still a work in progress. So uh, please bear that in mind. So the first thing that we're going to do, you know, to tackle that uh, bootstrap and, you know, for, you know, to do a refresher of the bootstrap, uh, the bootstrap is a statistical uh, technique to do uh, samples uh, with, uh, uh, with replacement, okay, of a, a, a set of values. And what we're trying to do is trying to, you know, generate as many samples as, as, we, uh, as we want to then estimate the, the, the confidence, the confidence interval of a particular statistic. Could be the mean, could be the median, could be the standard deviation, et cetera. The, the gist of this is that in this case, if you read carefully this, uh, you know, this, this exercise, is in, in, instead of uh, uh, dealing with a unique set of values, uh, we're dealing with pairs here. Okay, and the pairs are the the time, the duration of the of the of of, of each of each observation, but also the sensor status. Also, so we're dealing with both, and that kind of you know uh, throws a uh, you know th throws a wrinkle into this whole process. So that's why I'm still trying to you know figure out you know how how, how to reach how to reach the same. Uh, results as that R script, all right? So bear with me. Uh, we're going to define some variables, okay? Time column is, is going to be time, which is the one that we're dealing with here, right? Okay, time in our data set. And the event column is the, the status. Uh, how many bootstraps? Okay, but the exercise says that we're going to be doing this, repeating 200 times, okay? And the number, uh, the, the the number, the, the the number of bootstraps and the number of sample size for each of these bootstraps is going to be eighty eight, which is the original amount of observation that we have in the data set. So, uh, one of the things that I did was trying to get, you know, different approaches to this, and this approach, you know, I think is in the right uh, direction. So first, we're going to define a function to compute the Kaplan-Meier data. In other words, to compute the, the time, uh, the time index, but also the probability of each of, of those, uh, of, of the survival probability for each of those time uh, uh, lapses, okay? Time or time indexes. So here, what we're going to do is uh, get a, or, uh, you know, use the KMF, uh, fit function to derive the durations and also the event observed. That's going to be the input for that fitting. And of course, we're going to use the alpha as 0 0.03, but you know that, that doesn't matter you know, in this case. You can leave it to alpha, you know, the default. So we're going to instantiate that, that uh, function. And then we're going to use that function to create this uh, data set, okay? Let me check something here. Okay, time. Okay, let me run it. Because if I don't run it, then it's going to give me that error. Okay. So that data set looks like this. Right? We have the times, right? The final timeline. And we have the probabilities, the KM. So if we plot this, we're going to get uh, this plot. Okay, it's, it's, just, it's the same, except with the, you know, with the, with the, with the confidence interval, that's what, that's what we want to derive from the bootstrap. Okay, so now that we have that uh, data set and we have the values of KM, what we're going to do is bootstrap this uh, part of the, you know, of, of, of our data set, because those are the values that are going to give us the variation in the, you know, in the in in this solid line, to then get minus or plus uh, standard deviation to get that you know confidence interval. So that's what this for loop does. What it does is uh, bootstrap the sample. We sort it because we need it by 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 order. You know, for for the you know for the graph, 
And then we're going to do, you know, create an array. And from that array, we're going to uh, create a data frame. So let's do this. Okay, let's run it. It runs pretty fast. And then we get this kind of data set, which is the bootstrap data set. All right, so each of these columns is the bootstrap. So for example, column zero is the a sample from the from that uh, eighty seven because remember you know we're taking one one eight, so, sorry eighty eight we're not taking any any uh, missing values uh, out and that column uh, represents the first bootstrap for these values okay so for example you can check that for example some values are repeated and that's fine because that's what we want we want that uh, random uh, variation which in within each of this uh you know of, of this time time events okay so now we're going to compute the bootstrap mean which is the mean for all these values but at the row level okay not at the column level at the row level so eventually we're going to have something here that is going to be the mean and then also the standard deviation Okay, so we're going to compute the mean. We're going to compute the standard deviation, and this looks like this. Okay, the mean looks like this, right? Okay, which is the mean of each of these columns by row. All right? So you can see that it goes from 0.99 to 0.45, and it just, it just stays there. And then the standard deviation, the bootstrap standard deviation is going to be this one. Okay, which give us the variance of each of this, you know, a bootstrap, 200 bootstraps for each mean at the time index. Okay, then we're going to do some manipulation here, okay, to get it to a data frame that then we can use to uh, plot. I'm calling that BSDF, and this is the BSDF. This is the time uh, index that we have. This is the mean of the bootstrap. This is the standard deviation of the bootstrap. This is uh, one plus one standard deviation from this mean, which is this value, and then plus minus one standard deviation from this value too. Okay, so we have all the components that we need to recreate that Kaplan Mayer uh, cyber survivor curve, but using this method, uh, bootstrap. Right? We're going to do another manipulation, and then this is the plot. Okay, that we have. Uh, some things that you can notice here, and that's why, you know, I'm still trying to, you know, trying to, uh, trying to work on this, uh, this figure. As you can see, the bootstrap does pretty well you know, at the at the, at the first at, at the first events, let's say from zero to twenty to thirty, etc. But then you see that the graphs, the confidence intervals, start to get a little bit wider here. This doesn't happen in the bootstrap, and that's one of the things that I have to understand why it's not happening. I think I have an inkling of what is going on, but uh, you know, it, it needs a little bit more, more thought in terms of how the bootstraps are created using this uh, uh using this function uh K kmf okay and the and the manipulation of those pairs that we have to we have to contend with but at least you know we know that it's you know it's working and what it needs is a little bit more thought to try to get it to this you know to this level okay oh, like you're saying you want the standard error to be as wide well, in the in the original uh, uh, KM survivor curve, you see that the uh, the uh, the confidence the confidence interval as as the time progresses, it gets wider. Yeah, you know, you see that this is you know very small here, which is similar to this, and yeah. then it gets really wide here. Okay. Yeah, really I wide. think yeah. 
Yeah. I feel like I'm forgetting. Because the bootstrap, I think... So I don't know much about the Captain Meyer, but I think mm -hmm. the point of yeah. the bootstrap is that with taking all those samples, it's we're able to get like a tighter confidence interval. I think we're supposed to, I think it's supposed to be able to give us a tighter confidence interval. Well, the, the thing is that when I run it, you know, in the R version, hmm. uh, it gives me a very good approximation of this curve. Hmm. Not, not of this one. Okay. Hmm. So uh, the, the problem is that something is happening when you are dealing instead of, a, of one value, for example, if you get a value, let's say, of uh, uh, age, age, for example, let's say age. Age is, uh, you know, it's is, is a scalar, right? You know, it goes from, let's say, from zero to, let's say, uh, 100. Okay? There could be some more liars. But it's a scalar. Here, we're dealing with a pair of values. Okay? In other words, we're dealing with time and the probability of survival for each of the times. And that's a little bit more, you know, it's a little bit more uh, more complicated uh, to bootstrap, okay? And I can show you. Uh, I was doing some research here in, in you know, from the book, precisely, okay? Uh, on the cross-validation and bootstrapping. And this is how, okay, this is how you can get a bootstrap from uh, when, when there are two values, a pair of values involved. Okay, the an X and a Y. They have to go together. Okay. Uh, but but it's it's using uh IDX, it's using indexes, and it's a little bit you know more uh, more complex than just doing a bootstrap of a scalar, which is just one 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 value, you know, in one dimension only. All right. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean it's getting there, you know. It, it's not it's not there yet, but it's getting there. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and le let me tell you, uh, I I I comb the the you know the 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 net you know the, looking for some examples of of this, and I, I couldn't find a, a, anything particular uh, on bootstrapping a couple of mayor. The only thing, and of course, it is is in the R uh, environment, is a function from the Harold uh, Miss Miscellaneous package. Okay. It's a function called boot KF. All right? Which gives you already out of the bat a bootstrap for the Kaplan Mayer estimates. And I was looking at that. I was looking at, at the code and everything. And you know, it gets it gets pretty, pretty deep, you know. <laughs> it's kind of a rally hole there. <laughs> okay. So I mean, you know, it's it's a, it's a work in progress. This is a work in progress because we we don't have yet that widening, you know, from the you know from the later uh, events, the the you know the later uh, time events that we that 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 is not reflecting here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, well, yeah. Some, something to you know to chew on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's 